So, all right, I'm gonna give you some notes here. Uh, we're gonna talk about modeling with differential equations. Uh, what's a differential equation? It's simply an equation that's a derivative, okay? Uh, when we say something, if A is proportional to B, then what we are saying is there is some constant that we call K that is multiplying B. And uh, K is a constant, it's often called the constant of proportionality. We also have something called inversely proportional or proportional to the reciprocal. And when we say A is inversely proportional to B, we're saying that we're still <coughs> gonna have this constant of proportionality, but B is gonna be in the denominator. So K again is a constant. Your variables are A and B. So let's take a look at this, writing a differential equation that describes the relationship. Uh, if necessary, use K as a constant of proportionality. All right, so we're gonna talk about the rate of change of Y with respect to X. So when you see the words rate of change, we're talking about the derivative. And the respect to X will tell you what variable you're going to have in the denominator. Sometimes it says respect to T, sometimes it says respect to uh, some other type of measure. It may say theta down the road. So it says it is proportional, so I'm gonna have that K, to the product of T and the rate of change of W with respect to X. So the only constant there is K. So again, we had those words rate of change of W with respect to X. This will always be your denominator. All right, we have the force of a spring on a trampoline can be related to the distance d if it is stretched. Weren't you guys doing things in physics with springs? Yeah. yeah. The rate of change of the quantity f with respect to the distance. All right. Alexis, <coughs> how am I writing that? That's a lot of words. Rate of change of the quantity of f with respect to the distance d, just there. Um, so, would it be d of f over d of x? d of f over what? d of x, oh no, d of d. d of capital D, yeah. That's not my favorite thing to have two d's, but that's what we're gonna do. Now, is, is equals. Okay, Walker, inversely proportional. The division one. What's on top? Um, the, the K. It's K. Okay. And then on the bottom is the ln of D. And down on the bottom, it's the ln of D. Perfect. So we set that up perfectly. Now they give us some information. So they want us to find, it says, if the rate of change of F is three units per centimeter, then the spring has been stretched to 0.2 centimeters. What is the differential equation in this situation? Well, we have the differential equation. We're just missing what? Uh, the other, like, the rate of change, right? There's dw. Well, we're gonna keep this, okay? Because that's a differential equation because it's a derivative, right? But we're missing something. Is f a variable? Yep. Is d a variable? Is k a variable? 
No, we got to know what that constant is. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so, Leisha, DF, DD, do I, am I given a rate? What is that rate? Three units per centimeter, so I got three right here. Isn't that amazing that almost every single problem I've ever given in the last two years, there's always a number three in that. <laughs> Equals K, right, Leisha? Over what? Do I have a length? 0.2 centimeters. So, so that means that K is equal to, is approximately, because you're going to use your calculator, 3 times the natural log of 0 0.2. And I did that for you guys already. Hopefully I typed in my, in my calculator correctly. That's always the thing. I believe it's a negative. Am I right? Yes. Four following it? OK, then I'm OK. 0.828. So, DF, DD is equal to a negative 4.828 divided by the natural log of D. This is called <coughs> a particular differential equation. This is called a general differential equation. Ethan, why do I call the one on the right, lower right, particular and why do I call the one in the upper left general? Because the general can apply to more than one. If you have different numbers, correct. Particular and only applies to that one. Right. I would say you're exactly correct. I would say, hey, I don't know K here. That's why it's a general. I know K here. That's why it's particular. Okay. But you are right. This one was only going to work with this situation, right? Alrighty. Uh, this person named Mr. Brust is swimming in a straight line across a lake. His position from a point is given by P of T, where T is measured in minutes since the start of his swim. During the first 30 seconds, ooh, I always underline stuff. Those aren't the same units, are they? Okay. During the first 30 seconds, Mr. Brust's acceleration is proportional to the cube root of the time since the start of the swim. Write a different differential equation that describes this situation. Oh. Position. Acceleration. P of T is position. I want acceleration. Position is not a differential equation. Acceleration and velocity are, right? Because they're derivatives. Matthew, what derivative is acceleration? The second. The second. So I could say, P, uh, I can write it this way. You might see it this way also. Either way is okay. I'm going to write it this way. Equals is proportional. What's that mean? Matthew? 
You're right, they need that K, don't they? To the cube root of the time since the start of his swim. Now, during the first 30 seconds, this only holds true, right, for the first half minute. There isn't any, like up here, I was given numbers between, here I had a rate and I had a distance, and I had a rate and I had a distance. Here, I don't have an acceleration, do I? So I just gotta leave it like that. I gotta leave it in its general form. We okay on that? Lucy, what's on the back side? Yes, there is something there. I'll put that there to help you out. A smiling face. No. Oh, a polar, polar bear. bear in, the, in the North Pole. I know who I. You guys know who Chloe Molitor, right? Yeah. yeah. So, on all of her tests, she she drew uh, drew uh, polar bears. Alrighty. Okay. Do you have something that looks like this? Okay. You have something that looks like this on the back. Am I right? Okay. So we're going to do these together. Separation of variables, general solutions. Mr. Kruger, mine doesn't have a back side. Mine oh. has a back side. Like we got, yeah. You got the opposite ones. Yeah. Lisha, can you hand these two to there? Because those are the correct ones. I gave them the wrong ones. Sorry. Okay. All right. So implicit differentiation. Uh, let's, Brant, can you do that for me? What's the derivative of x squared? You know that. 2x. 2x, perfect. Plus. 2i. Times what? 2i dx. Perfect. Equals what? 0. Perfect. Not a polar bear. That means dy over dx is equal to? What? Uh, You're going to subtract the 2x, correct? Yeah. And that's going to make it a what? Negative 2x over 2y. Can I divide by 2? Yeah. Are you okay if I write this? Yeah, that works for me. That works for you? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what shape this is? Circle. Circle. Sure. <laughs> so this is telling me the slope of the tangent line at any point on the circle. I can know x and y, right? It's a nice little kind of, I mean, it's easy. You know, like on this point, oh, you'll have three, you'll have zero, three. So at zero, three, you have a slope of zero. At three, zero, you'll have an undefined slope, but it'll be vertical, right? Because you can have tangent lines like look down a circle. All right, let's see the middle. Already. So the, this is, we're going to do a thing called separation of variables. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by y and both sides by dx, and I get this. You should always be multiplying by dx. You should always be multiplying by dy. Never add, never subtract, never divide. Okay? And now I'm going to integrate both sides. <coughs> Zero? Yeah. You could choose the right side or the left side? Left side. You're going to choose the left side. Okay, what do you get? Um, one half y squared. I would get a constant, wouldn't I? Right? I thought that you wouldn't zero plus y. You are correct. 
though merged, you become the constant here is not necessarily the same constant over here, but when I subtract that constant, it creates a constant. Okay, everybody remember that? Yeah. Okay, I'll do, I'll do it. On this side, I'm going to call it C1. Okay. You just have the constant on the other side. Right. Because I'm going to subtract that C1 from the other constant, and guess what? It'll become a constant. Okay. So that means, at least you're going to get my weight out to do this. If I had used my, I should have used my new pens and erased. Yeah, yeah. Equals. Okay, what am I going to have on this, the right side then? Oh, um, one bit X plus C. Plus C. Yeah. Okay. And so I can multiply everything by 2. Would you agree? Yeah. Y squared equals 2 thirds X cubed plus C. Okay. Is 2 a constant? Is C a constant? Did you multiply a constant times a constant? No, that's not what I was confused about. I'm confused about the C1, C2, C2. Oh, okay. Let me back up over here. So I had this. 1 half Y squared plus C1 equals 1 third X cubed plus C2. Correct? So I'm going to subtract that constant because I want to get Y by itself. So C2 minus C1 is just a constant. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm doing. Okay. And rather than go through all that effort just to get C, I'm just going to put C on the right side. Right? That's kind of what we were talking about before, guys, yeah. right? Okay. So now I'm going to, how do I get Y by itself? i got to do the what? Zero. With a plus and minus in front, yeah. correct? Yeah. And that's my general form, Ethan? because it's got that C. Yeah. It's kind of like the K. Notice C and K are used a lot in puzzles. Mm -hmm. And B is the shape of the absolute value sign, just saying. All right, over here. Um, what am I called on? Alicia, tell me what to do. I'm gonna have Lucy do uh, three. Oh, give me a hint. I'm going to put an equal sign in there. Perfect. Integrate. Integrate. What's the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. You can say negative very proudly, but you are correct. Plus C. What is this over here? I heard, did you say a negative one over Y? Yes. Okay, so this is a negative two, right? You would add one to a negative two, it would become a negative one, and then you divide by that negative one, you would just make it's negative. All right, so one over y is equal to the cosine of x plus c, would you agree? I see nodding there, Lucy okay with that? Okay, so y equals one over the cosine of x plus c. Grant, does that look okay? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. You're not lying to me, are you? No, that one looks good. Okay, Lucy? You got the hard one. What? I'm trying to think. Uh, when you do 1 over y times 2y equals uh, 1 half x squared. Oh, you're, you're, you're right, but right now I'm just going to write that. Oh, okay. You're, you're headed in the right direction. Okay. Now I'm going to integrate. And over here you get what? Uh, 1 half x cubed. Plus c. What do you get here? Is that just the area that you have there on the side? The absolute value of y. Are we doing okay, folks? Okay, so that means y is equal to, what's my base here, Lucy?
E, I think you said E. Right? Well, isn't this is a log? I, yeah, I isn't this log phase E? Yeah, I don't okay. see like U phase type going. <laughs> Music phase? Yeah. Or bass? <coughs> okay. Okay. What's my exponent? Let me let's, let me review. Let's say I had this log base three of nine equals two. That means three is my base, two is my exponent, nine is my answer, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So it would be like the whole like one half x squared plus c. One half x squared plus c. Perfect. Okay. So that's the same as this. Would you agree, Lucy? Because when you multiply things that are in exponential form and the bases are the same, you add the exponents, correct? Now, I got a whole bunch of two of the 26 letters of the alphabet right here. E is a constant. C is a constant. So when you take a constant to a constant power, you get a constant. constant. So a lot of times, I can't remember if we wrote B or E, it doesn't matter, or B or C, it doesn't matter. That's my final answer. And I think last year, did I show you that we skipped to that line? Do you remember that, Ethan? We doing okay on that? Yeah. You remember that? It was a long time ago, six months ago. Not nearly as, maybe not six months, maybe. Or not. You remember that? Okay, good, because this one's yours. Brad, what are, what are we gonna do on this one? We're done at quarter after, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe? No, it's quarter. Okay, what are we gonna do on this one? You know, sir, I'm not quite sure yet. Can we factor? that's basic law we can do right now, right? Because I can't subtract the 4x, I can't subtract the 2xy, so I'm gonna take out a 4, or 2x you said? Yeah. And you get y plus two? Okay, does that help? Possibly. Okay, equal sign? Mm -hmm. Now we got uh... dy's over here? Dx is over here. Would you agree? Yeah, so you got one over. One y over plus what? Y plus two. Perfect. Dy. Yep. And what? Two x over here. Yeah. Integrate. What's the antiderivative of two x? Uh, x squared. Plus. What's the antiderivative of one over y plus two? Okay, let's go look at this. When we had one over y, she said it was the natural log. Yeah. By what, what's the key to it? Well, just add it to the y. Uh, y plus two. Y plus two, yeah. One. Hey, Kruger, when did you, isn't this when you like, hit your thong last year? Is this it? You missing me? Hitting my gun? You want me to hit my gun? Yeah, like, isn't it, you hit it like sometime like this, right? Oh, it had to do, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Yeah, you're remembering really good. I'm gonna do this. That has an exponent of one, correct? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, why do I do that? I can't, you don't want me. He's gonna be so grumpy. Ten minutes. So, uh, that, because if you add one to a negative one, you get zero. And then we ha would have to divide by zero, and that's why the gong goes up. We can't do that, so that's why we use natural log, okay? That's our first thing, okay? And then, if you take a look, when I take the derivative of this, 
y plus two goes on the bottom and the derivative of y would go on top, which is one dy dx. Okie doke. All right, I see somebody nodding, that's a good sign. All right, let's keep going. Uh, what am I gonna do here then? y plus two is equal to what? Can I do this? But you could also just see the front. Can I do that? Yeah. It just saves me room. Okay. So that's general solutions. Remember that? I think those, did you get a problem like that last year on the AP exam? You don't remember? I'll have to look. When you do, that's like out of six points, you just got four. Okay? Backside. Okay, particular solution. Mr. Kruger? Yes, ma'am. Are we supposed to subtract the two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody forgot really this. That wasn't Brant's fault, that was my fault. Yeah, I already did it, Mr. Kruger. Sorry. I got too enthralled by my gong. Yeah, nothing excited. else. I understand. You know what? Ten years ago, I never made those kind of mistakes. All right, initial condition. So over here, this is called a slope field. I am going to give you notes next week on a slope field. But if I take a look at this, it says here's the point one comma one above there. And if you take a look, it kind of looks like it's going up this way. <coughs> and then it's kind of flattening out. Something like that. That's my guess. We'll find out for sure. This looks like it's head towards that x axis. All right, Ethan, what would you have me do before the bell rings? I'll give you a hint you want me to write a people sign. So xy times xy, what is xy times xy? Uh, x squared plus 2yx. There's no plus sign. This means oh. this. Right? There's no plus sign. Yeah. Oh, we'll find